you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I would like to introduce myself in a different way. Uh, I am a former political prisoner for a long time. Uh, I was very young. Maybe uh, only few of you were as I was 19. <laughs> and um, I got my degree from prison when I was 35. So uh, that was a good time. But uh, I'm not saying this to, uh, to raise your sympathy. Actually, it was a second childhood for me. And I think it's a privilege to have two childhoods. It is not something that one can um, get. This is a rare experience. And it was, in the end, an emancipatory experience to me. I mean, I was liberated from some of my internal uh, prisons in the uh, jails of Hafz al-Assad regime. Then maybe I have another uh, uh, a bit more painful experience, which was the abduction of my brother, of my wife, and uh, some uh, of my friends. And the challenge I have been facing, in the, they've been abducted for more than three years now, the challenge is to give a meaning to this and to uh, derive meaning of this. Uh, in Arabic, we have some etymological relation between mu'anat, uh, which means suffering, and ma'na, which means meaning. I've been working on this, and it is, it is nearly impossible. All the, our intellectual work cannot represent uh, really, uh, the real human suffering the uh, torture, the uh, forced disappearance, the pain, and the body, the, the, uh, the crushed bodies uh, that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm telling the, uh, you about these, but these are the experiences of Syrians for around six years now. In a way, my intellectual work was a story of a failure. I'm still struggling, I'm still working on it. Uh, I'm trying to develop uh, better representations of these uh, experiences, but so far I still feel these representations are very limited, are uh, poor in comparison to the uh, experiences that Millions of, yeah, maybe you know some numbers, uh, at least half a million were killed, one million, eight hundred thousands were crippled in a way, without a leg, without a hand, without an eye or something, and 12 million displaced, more than five million outside the country. So this is, a, this is quite a big challenge. And it is a challenge to uh, justice, to politics, and to culture. I'm working uh, on the public issues and using cultural tools. I'm, uh, I use humanities in my analysis and my understanding. My books are about Syrian society, about religion, about politics, and um, yeah, I always felt that these tools uh, are facing some challenges from these horrible experiences, and I feel that this is a global thing. It is not something related to Syria. Actually, my maybe the last uh, generation, I feel that there's the world became poorer on the level of meanings, on level of in, in new horizons for humanity, in new utopias. After the communism fall, the word utopia got a bad reputation, which is a, a big mistake in my opinion, because this is the horizon for humanity. This imagining a new worlds and different worlds is very vital for humans to, to live their reality uh, in a more, maybe a more, uh, a richer way. I mean, when we have utopias, our 
reality became richer, became more fertile. So, um, and I feel this utopia uh, should be built on how not to live with uh, horrors like those happening in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, those who happened in uh, Yugoslavia and many other countries. About Syria, I feel that Maybe it's better to give you uh, more time to ask questions and uh, um, not to talk much myself. <laughs> <laughs>